Good morning. Any student who is here in the physical mode in the campus? Surprising, all of you were eager to come to college and now that we are calling you, nobody is ready to come to the classes. It is really very disappointing and upsetting. I decided not to engage Saturday's class because Tuesday I was expecting the students to be here in campus. Aditya? Aditya? Aditya, are you there? Shall 
श्राव्य ऑडिबल उज्जवल सो वाई यू आर नॉट कमिंग फॉर द क्लासेस इन द फिजिकल मोड कैन समबडी टेल मी अ गुड रीजन There is no reason which you can mention. You can see so many students moving around in the campus. They are staying in the hostel, but you don't want to come to the department. Is that so, Sarvesh, Ayush? Ma'am, I am not in the campus. What did you say? Sorry, I could not get you. Why you are not in campus? You were asked to report from twenty first of March, right? but you are so eager to come to a college well whatever well we were discussing about this rolling contact bearing well complete this numerical and then I'll tell you what is the relevance of this term E and what is this FA by CO. So as of now, we had started this problem. The problem statement is a bearing is mounted to support a vertical shaft. We have to design a ball bearing for the following data: the radial load is seven thousand newton, axial load is twenty one hundred newton. At three hundred RPM, the life is given as one sixty-two million revolutions. We are solving this problem from ESG design data book, and the next problem is solved from Shivalkar design data book. And in page number four point four of PSG design data book, for the type of bearing, deep groove ball bearing. the ratio for fa by c not is given and this you can use if you know the kind of bearing if you know the bearing from the design data book you know the value of c not where c not is the static load carrying capacity but since here the bearing is not known we do not know what is the value of fa by c not but we have fa and we have fr And we know that the ratio of FA by FR as it is twenty one hundred by seven thousand, which comes out to be zero point three. Now we have to select some value of E from the range zero point two two to zero point four four. We have no idea which value. Uh, what is the value for E here? But we are tentatively assuming some value of E. Say value of E we assume for this problem is zero point two four. You could have assumed zero point three seven, zero point two two, zero point three one, anything. But because we have to start from somewhere, so we assume this value of E, and then we are going to check. So for E zero point two four, now our F A by F R which happens to be zero point three, F A by F R zero point three is greater than the value of E which is zero point two four. So, and for E as zero point two four, for the last but one column, which is F A by F R greater than E, the value of X and Y are given. The value of X remains constant for all the values of E, which is zero point five six. Value of Y is one point eight for E as zero point two four. So this is as given in the design data book. We are not using this one. We are using zero point two four. 
so x and y they are representing the uh, composition of radial load and axial load by formula to get the equivalent load so if a bearing is subjected to radial and axial both we have to uh, find out what is the equivalent load which will cause the same amount of damage or the same amount of loading as that of radial load so with x times of fr and y times fa we got the equivalent load as 7700 and for this equivalent load by using the formula lsc by fe whole cube million cycles where l becomes the life l10 life when we are simply writing l it is always l10 life by default so value of l10 is given fe we have calculated so we got the value of c which is the dynamic load carrying capacity which came out to be 41975 newton now we have to check for what number of ball bearing we get the dynamic load carrying capacity as 41975 newtons design data book is giving the value of dynamic load carrying capacity in kgf assuming g as 10 we have converted this to 4197 kg now we have to select a bearing which is close to this dynamic load carrying capacity now either we'll have a value of c less than this or greater than this selecting a value less than this will not make a bearing safe and so we always select a value of Uh, C higher than four one nine seven, and for deep blue ball bearing, next higher value after four one nine seven happens to be four five five zero, and this is for the bearing six zero one eight. That is given on page number four point one two. And now we have to check whether this F A by C or this combination that we uh, chose or the value of E that we selected. Whether this was correct. So for six zero one eight, what is the value of C not given in the same table? C not is the static load carrying capacity. What is the value given? Is that four one five zero? PSJ design data book page number four point one two. This is again in KGF. And now we have to check whatever was our assumption. So what is FA by C not now? FA is twenty one hundred. And CO is four one five zero. If I convert into newtons, assuming G is ten, this is C zero. So what is FA by C zero? We are getting it is point zero five. And what did we assume here when we we selected E as zero point two four? Corresponding to this, what was F A by C no? We are converting four one five zero into newton, so we multiply it with ten. So you get point zero five, not point five. When we assumed E as zero point two four, what was F A by C O? Point zero four. This one was our assumed value, and this one is the real value. F A remains the same. C naught value is changing. For C naught as point zero five, this means C naught is greater than the required value. what we selected was c not less than the required value isn't it we had selected c not less than the required value and here it is greater than the required value so this is how we check suppose your fa by c not this value comes out to be 0.2 or 0.1 or 0.5 
then uh, this tells you that you are very much away or deviated from the actual value. So this assumption was quite right. We can uh, try one more combination. Let us assume we were working with self-aligning bearings. Since it's an iterative process for the same problem, so although this is correct, so the kind of bearing that should be selected is 6048, 6018, which is a deep groove ball bearing with diameter of the shaft 18 into 590. The same problem we are again trying to solve, assuming it is a self-aligning ball bearing. Since we have to assume, let the bearing be self-aligning ball bearing. For the same axial and the radial load, so again, F A by C naught is not required here. You have to assume the value of E, and you have to assume the value of X and Y. F A by F R, this remains same. Now what value of E you want to assume from this table? Same page, page 4.4, PSG design data book. The value of E is given from the range 0 0.5 to 0 0.28 and then 0 0.60 to 0 0.39. Let us select from 2200 series. Give me a value between 0 0.5 to 0 0.28. Let us say I am picking up the first value of E as 0 0.5. You can try with other values. So if E is 0. 5 and FA by FR is 0 0.3, then FA by FR happens to be less than E. This is now less than E because E is 0 0.5, FA by FR is 0 0.3. So what are, what are the values for X and Y? What is X and what is Y? X is 1, Y is 1.3. For value of E assumed as 0 0.5, where FA by FR now becomes less than E, X is 1 and Y is 1.3. So what is the equivalent load again? X times FR plus Y times FA.
given the equivalent load Z9370, 9730, 9730. From here, you have to again give me the value of dynamic load carrying capacity. which is Fe into L raised to 1 by 3. Give me the value. So what is the value of C? Sajim, I So it is 5-3. Why so much variation? 5-3-0-4-1, 5 3 0 4 one 5 3 one 5 0 5 3 0 4 one This is in Newton's, right? So, which is roughly 5304 kgf. Which is roughly 5304 kgf. Select the bearing for this C, which is a self aligning bearing. Since we have selected E as 0 0.5, we should get the bearing between 2200 to 2204. Are we on the right track? Self aligning ball bearing is the value of C as 5304. For this value of C, which which number of bearing, self-aligning ball bearing is given in the data book. So choose the next higher value after 5304. What is the next available value of C? For self aligning ball bearing. Ujwal, Anshuman, Aditya, give me answers. 5400 is given there for self aligning. Five five zero zero is given, and that is for bearing number what?
What is the bearing number? 2218. For the value of C, 5500 kgf. This is given on page number 4.16. Now this is for bearing number 2218. And the value of E that we have selected is 0 0.5, which is for the range of bearing 2200 to 2204. This is for self-aligning bearing number 2200 to 2204, which means our assumption and this bearing number, these are not matching. Do you agree? So if it is 2218, then we should have selected the value of E as what? Refer to the page number 4.4 .4 again. Self-aligning ball bearing. The first row is for 2200 to 2204. Next row is for 2205 to 2207. Next row is for 2208 to 2209. So for the bearing 2218, which lies between 2214 and 2220, what is the value of E? 0 0.26. I really am surprised or I am wondering how many of you are getting me. This design data book is not very simple to understand. Either you have to listen to me or you have to attend the class in the physical mode. So if you are selecting the bearing 2218, then the value of E should be 0 0.26. And for this value of E, our FA by FR, which is 0 0.3, this happens to be greater than E. And if it is greater than E, and the value of X and Y are also changing. For E, 0 0.26 and less than FA by FR, what is X and what is Y? Zero point six five and three point eight. Give me the equivalent load again. For this value of X and Y, we have to again check for C and we have to see that that value of C and the bearing number that matches closely with the kind of bearing that we have selected. Give me FE again, equivalent load, X times FR plus Y times FE. Is that 12,530? Again, gave me the value of C. From C, we get the bearing number. Give me the value of C. Is that 68305 value of C? 68305 Newtons. In KGF, we assume it to be 6830 KGF. Now for such a high value of C, again your bearing number would change.
सेल्फ अलाइनिंग बॉल बेरिंग सिक्स थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड थर्टी सिक्स एट थ्री जीरो विच वन इज क्लोजर टू दिस ऑन लिटिल ऑन हायर साइड सेवन सिक्स फाइव जीरो सो द नेक्स्ट अवेलेबल वैल्यू ऑफ सी इज सेवन सिक्स फाइव जीरो एंड वॉट इज दैट बेरिंग नंबर द बेरिंग नंबर टू 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 जीरो इज दिस अजम्पन वैल्यू इतना फॉर टू 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 जीरो द वैल्यू ऑफ ई इज जीरो पॉइंट टू सिक्स Yes or no? Yes. So value of E is zero point two six for the bearing range two two one four to two 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 zero, which means this selection is correct. So if it's a self-aligning ball bearing and two 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 zero, and if it is a deep groove ball bearing, then what was the number six zero? One eight deep groove ball bearing. So both of them would be sufficient to withstand the radial load of seven thousand newton and axial load of twenty one hundred newton, with a life of one sixty two million revolutions at three hundred rpm. This is how you design a ball bearing. so let me quickly tell you what is this relevance of e and then we'll solve another problem from um, shivalka design data book <clears throat> the effect of combined radial and axial load if you are not getting what we have done here you are free to ask me questions else i assume it's clear combined radial and axial load we know that if if a is the axial load or the thrust thrust is same as axial load if fr is the radial load and the equivalent load fe by definition is the load that does the same amount of damage as combined fa and fr this is the equivalent load which causes the same amount of damage by definition the equivalent load is the load which causes same amount of damage as combined axial and radial now for finding out the value of e again lot of experimentations were performed why we modify the value of e is not clear we haven't modified the value of e because we have to take some value of x and y and we don't know what is the value of x and what is the value of y so you have to assume some value of x and y so we are assuming some value of e corresponding to that e we are selecting x and y and accordingly we are assuming that this was a ball bearing and we cross check that by finding its dynamic load carrying capacity and from dynamic load carrying capacity we again checked which series of ball bearing we have selected this was to validate our earlier assumption so our earlier assumption was e value was 0.5 which means the bearing should have been self aligning ball bearing 2200 to 2204 but the dynamic load carrying capacity that we got 
this is lying in the range of 2204 to 2220 and for this ball bearing the value of e is 0.26 and hence we in the second iteration we assumed e as 0.26 we again calculated to check whether the dynamic load carrying capacity is lying in this range of ball bearing for the value of es 0.26 so initially you have to assume something because you have to start solving the problem and then you have to check if your assumption was correct so this is same as in the gear design we assume some value initially and then we check if this value of m or this value of b was correct if not then you have to modify well so <clears throat> a graph was plotted by the researchers who conducted experimentation and this was the graph between the dimensionless parameter fa upon v times fr i'll tell you what is v and fe the equivalent load upon v times fr now v is a is a constant whose value is 1 if inner race is rotating and this value of v is 1.2 if the outer race rotates What do you mean by inner race and outer race? Deepika, what do you mean by inner race and outer race? Atharva. What is inner, inner and outer fixed and rotating? If this is a ball bearing, what is this known as? the hollow circular disc outside the balls what is this known as outer race and the inner ring is known as inner race that is the the definition of outer race and inner race inner race is connected to the shaft and the outer race is connected to the support now uh, having plotted the graph between fe by fr again a dimensionless parameter and fa by vfr where the value of v is 1 or 1.2 depending upon the condition the graphs were obtained like till a given point all the points were lying in a straight line and then the slope of the graph changed so the graph was like this so this value where the the graph changed its slope this is e and till the value of f a by vfr till the value of fa by vfr is less than or equal to e the equation is fe by vfr this is 1 for fa by vfr if the value is less than this value e then this line is a straight line and so the equation is fe by vfr this is equal to 1 but if the value of fa by vfr if this is greater than e then the equation changes to y is equal to mx 
plus C So this will move to be x plus y times fa by b f r or the same thing was rewritten. So this is the equation for this line where fa by f r is greater than e. The same thing is again written as Fe is B times X Fr plus Y times Fa. So for all practical purpose, we are assuming the inner race is rotating and hence V is 1. Unless the outer race rotates, we are assuming this as x into fr plus y into fe. And what is this e? So this e, e is the point where the, the slope of the graph changes. This depends upon the ratio of axial load upon the static load carrying capacity. So as the load and the static uh, load carrying capacity changes, the value of E changes. And so in the, in the, in the table page number 4.4, .4, the value of FA by C0 is given and accordingly the value of E is given. There is no direct correlation. But then <clears throat> as the value of FA by C0 changes, the value of E also changes or it increases. So if you know the ball bearing, you know what is FA by C0, you know what is X and Y, you know what is value of E, and accordingly you can find out what is the equivalent load. But if the kind of bearing is not known and you have to select it, then you have to either start with FA by C0 by assuming some bearing or start with the value of E, get the value of X and Y, find the equivalent load and check what is the value of E that we are getting. And hence, these two conditions, whether FA by FR is less than E or greater than E, and accordingly, we use the equations. Let us solve another problem from Shibalka Design Data Book. Next problem. In a particular installation, in a particular installation, it was found that It was found that a deep groove ball bearing zero four one eight was used zero four one eight was used. With the following particulars, with the following particulars to carry loads at at thousand RPM, to carry the loads at thousand RPM, find the expected life. When we are simply saying life, it is always L10 life. 
What do you mean by alternate life? Ujwal, what do you understand by an L10 life? Vaishnavi, Devanj, life at which 10% of the bearings fail and 90% survive. That is L10 life. Find the expected life for these two conditions in the problem. First is for a constant radial load of 5000 kgs the conditions are the speed is constant there is no preloading Outer race is fixed. What do you mean by preloading? And the load is steady, steady load. What is preloading? Manan, Ajinkya, impact due to the clearance. So it is the impact between the balls due to the clearance that is created at the time of assembly. Give me this answer. Okay. Good. Second condition, the radial load of 5000 kgs. and axial load of 1500 kgs. Conditions given, speed remains constant, so there is no variation in the speed. It is preloaded. Outer race and inner race both are rotating and rotating in opposite directions. Races uh, both are rotating and they are rotating in opposite directions. And it is a moderate shock load. Moderate shock load. Open the design data book by Shivalkar. Again, the load carrying capacities are given for deep blue ball bearing and cylindrical roller bearing. Here we get data only for ball bearing and roller bearing. For deep blue ball bearing with the series 0, 4, and the bore diameter 18 what is the dynamic capacity page number 149 149 bd shivalka design data
Check for deep groove wall bearing. Four columns are given. First one is for 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, and 04. And the rows are given for different bore diameters. So if the bore diameter is 18, and if the bearing that we are selected is 04 series, what is the value of dynamic load carrying capacity? The values are given here in Newtons. For bore diameter 18, 146. It is 146,000 Newton. Here the values are given in Newton. Make sure you are in the right uh, column in the correct row. The column is 04XX series and the row is for bore number 18 where diameter is 90, 18 into 5, 90. And the value for C for deep groove wall bearing is given as 146000 Newton, which is 146 kilo Newton. Now load is given. This is pure radial load. We have to directly get its L10 life, which is C by Fe. Here Fe is same as Fr. Raised to 3. These many million revolutions. Give me the L10 life. For that, FA is now FR into the factors K1, K2, K3, K4. Refer page number 144. So K0 is the oscillation factor, whether the speed is constant or it is sinusoidal or it is non-constant rotational condition. So what is K0? Page number 144, various factors on the bearing load calculation. So now FA is equal to FR into all these factors where K0 is the oscillation factor. For constant rotational speed, K0 is 1. Second, preloading factor KP, whether it is non-preloaded or preloaded. For the first case, it is, so it is giving non-preloaded. So what is the value for KP for preloading? This is again given as 1. What is the value of rotational factor Kr, which depends upon whether inner race is rotating or outer is rotating or which one is fixed. So if the outer is fixed, inner is rotating, the value of Kr is 1. If the outer is rotating, inner is fixed and the value is in the range of 1.4 to 1.6. And if both the races are rotating in opposite direction, the value is 2. So this is again 1. And for the service factor, if it's a steady load for ball bearing, what is the value of Ks? For steady load, what is the value of Ks? This is again 1. Nothing is mentioned here and so we are assuming the reliability factor K reference is also 1. For 
ninety percent reliability. The value of reliability factor is also one, and hence FR remains as the value that is given five thousand kgs. Convert this into newtons. So this remains as F R. Convert this into newtons. Let C be in newton one forty six thousand. Let F R be in newton. Give me the value of L ten line. So everything is one. This equivalent load is same as five thousand kgs, or this is fifty kilonewton. Give me Elton, Elton life. Twenty-six point three. Somebody please confirm. Six point three. Okay. Twenty four point eight. Yeah, this is my answer. Twenty four point eight nine. These many million revolutions. Tomorrow we'll we'll convert this into hours, and then we'll solve the second part of the problem. We'll take a few more numericals on ball bearing. That's all from my end. If you have any questions, free to ask. Else, you can leave. No questions, no doubts. Ambika, 